Okay. Um, logarithmic functions today, starting in worksheet eight. They kind of assume some things, like that you remember something about logarithms from last year. They don't have very many basic questions, like rewrite as a logarithm, rewrite as an exponent. So we will go over that a little bit. But hopefully you do remember some of it from last year. Um, remember yesterday we talked about that this was transcendental algebra? <laughs> that meant that you couldn't undo it by adding and subtracting, okay? And the basic four operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. The idea is that the inverse of an exponential that we learned about yesterday, we learned about things like this, that the inverse of that has to have some definition, okay? And the inverse is that we write this as a log. We write log base b of y equals x, okay? Do you remember that definition from last year? That you're switching those? No one's told me that they tried these and they had no sound, so I'm a little worried that sometimes they have no sound. Has anyone watched any of the videos? I've one. You did watch one and it had sound? Yeah, okay. but I haven't watched it because I know it's that big. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. Um, this is, we're going to do some more of these, but this is the shape of exponential we did yesterday. This is the shape of a log. Generally, it depends what the base is. All right, so this is very, 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 very important. This is the definition right here. If you have log base b of x, it means b to the y equals x. The base stays the base over here. The answer to the log is the exponent, okay? The answer here, well, it says it down here. Remember that a logarithm is exponent. The answer to the log is if you rewrote it, it would be the exponent, okay? Everybody remember that from last year, maybe? So, when I give you a quiz and tell you you can't use a calculator, are you going to know your exponent, basic exponent ideas? So, log base 3 of 81 means 3 to what power equals 81? Do you know that one without a calculator? <laughs> we'll start multiplying. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. How many times do you think that's going to go into 81? One more 3. So, this would be 4. Okay. What power is this? 5 to what power equals the square root of 5? Remember we talked about those yesterday? Square root is 1 half power. All right. 7 to what power is 1 49th? Well, 49 is 7 to what power? Okay. So 49 is 7 squared. But what puts it down in the denominator is making it negative. Yep, so this is 7 to the negative 2. Okay? And log base 2 of 2 means 2 to what power equals 2? So the power is 1. I'm going to jump back real quick. I kind of forgot to talk about these things up here. By definition, B, the base, cannot be negative or 1. Okay? And the value you're taking a log of also has to be positive. So b has to be positive, but it can be, it can't be 1, but it can be like 1 fourth, 1 third. Um, and x, the value you're taking the log of, has to be positive by definition. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to our guided practice here. Yikes, I don't know if I would be mean enough to put that on a quiz, but 8 times 8 is 64, 64 times 8, yeah, I'm thinking so, okay, so this is 3, this means 4 to what power equals 4 to the 3.2, what do you think? 3.2, .2. all right, this is 2 to what power equals 1 over 32, so 2 to what power equals 1 over 2 to the, okay, 2 times 2 is 4, 
times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So we got up to 5. Oh, that's not what goes there. Yeah. This is still 2 to what power? This was 2 to the 5th. So it's 2 to what power equals 2 to the negative 5th. So the answer to this is negative 5. Yes? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, in the bin down there, or actually I think on the table in front of the blue basket, there's some. All right, so this is 16 to what power is square root of 2? Well, this is 2 to the 1 half. What is this? 2 to the... What's 16? 2, 4, 8, 16. 2 to the 4th? All right, I'm not writing this well at all. There should be a 4 there, okay? So this is 2 to the 4th to some power equals 2 to the 1 half. So what do you do with exponents when there's a parenthesis there like that? Multiply them. So we get 4 boxes equals 1 half. Well, how do you solve 4 times something equals a half? I suppose if you had a calculator, you could divide by 4. But what else will get rid of a 4 when you're dealing with a fraction on the other side? Taking a fourth. Multiplying by one-fourth will make this equal to what? Okay, I understand everybody wants me to put six of those on the next quiz, right? Since you are all down with that. If we had rewritten this with a little algebra in it, okay, it would say 16 to what power equals the square root of 2? If you said, well, this is 2 to the fourth to some power, and this is 2 to the one-half, so you would have 4x equals 1 half, looking just at the <laughs> exponents. And then you'd take a fourth and you'd get an eighth. A little better with algebra? Yes? How do you get a 4 when 2 to the 4th is a 4? Say that again? How do you get a 4x when you take the exponents? If you have 2 to the 3rd to the 5th power, you multiply these and get 2 to the 15th. Remember the exponent rules? Okay. <coughs> so I just did 4 times x. Right there? So where did the 2 go then? I got rid of it on both sides. That's a good question. Oh, okay. I just looked at the exponents. 4x equals 1 half. I got rid of both 2's down there. Good question. All right. Um, these are the basic properties of logs that some of you probably understand and don't know why they work. <laughs> Log base b of 1 is always 0. It's because b to the what power will give you 1. This is always 0, right? Anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, so that's what that one is saying. The second one is basically saying b to what power equals b to the 1. So this is just always 1. When the base and the number you're taking uh, the log of are both the same, your answer will be 1. If you rewrote this third one, which looks like this, I think, as a log, as an exponent, you'd have b to the y equals b to the y. All right, so the answer here, log base b of b, is y. Do you remember this vaguely from last year? I'm just making up numbers here. But do you remember this property that we're going to learn next week that says you can throw that guy out front as a multiplication? Okay, that's basically what this is saying. When you have log base b of b to the y, to the x power, the x can go out in front, and then log base b becomes one that we had right here. All right, so just previewing the property, but log base b of b is just one, and so you have one times y or y. Here, log b to the log base b of x, they undo each other, guys. An exponent and a log undo each other, so you just get x. All right. So let's try these. They did 5 to what power is 125? Can we do that without a calculator? 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125, so it was 3. What about this one? I can't do that without a calculator. 
Oh wait, yes I can, because 12 to the log base 12 undoes each other exponent and log, so we just ended up with 4.7. So this is 9 to what power is 81? Anyone? <coughs> 2. And 3 to the log base 3 undoes each other, so we just get 1. All right. All of the properties, everything we just talked about, works for what's called a common <laughs> logarithm. A common logarithm is base 10. So when you see on a paper it says y equals log of 12, okay? There's no little base down here. If it's spelled L-O-G, it means base 10. Okay, automatically it's always base 10. So the graph would be, uh, the basic graph is 10 to the x, the inverse graph will be the log, L-O-G, common log. All right, and all the properties follow through. All right, so let's try this. Uh, log with no base, which means 10, of 0 .001. Can you read that? What's 0 .001 really saying? One. 1,000. So 1 1,000th. Well, what power of 10 is 1,000? How many zeros? So this is 1 over 10 to the third, and what put it down there was that it was a negative 3. So this becomes 10 to the what equals 10 to the negative 3. When we rewrite 1 1,000th as 10 to the negative 3, so the answer is just negative 3. All right, there's no base on this log up top, so they undo each other and we just get five. On this question, you would need a calculator. There's no nice way to do that. They got 1.42. And will you type this on your calculator? Because we got some curious answers last period. Log of negative five. Some of you got error, but some of you got 0.69 gobbledygook. What's at the end, though, of your gobbledygook? An I, okay? In the n real number system, there is no ability to take a log of a negative number, and that's the system we're working in, so you need to either put your calculator back in real notation, okay? Not A plus BI form, or you need to recognize that when it says that, it's not a real solution. Taking the log of a negative number is undefined. Let me go back really fast to this slide. Right here. What did it say? The number you're taking a log of x right here must be greater than 0. You cannot take a log of a negative number. All right, now I don't know what slide I was on. Um, we're finishing up here. Can we do these then together real fast? What power of 10 is this? How many zeros? This is 10 to the fourth. Do you know how to get that as a power of 10? 0.81? It was base nine or base three. I could do it maybe, but no. This is a calculator question, okay? So what is the log of 0.081? Negative one. Okay. Is it okay that we got a negative? You get an answer that's negative. You just can't take the log of a negative number. It, this question just floors me that they actually put this in a book. Okay, first of all, there's no such thing as negative zero. <laughs> I know they were trying to get across the point that it's undefined, but that's just weird. All right, what happens here? 10 to the log, common log. They undo each other and we get 3. They've, they're asking you as an exponent question. So you would have to rewrite it as a log. So you would say the log base 10 of something equals the exponent. I'm out of room. So then you would go, oh wait, 
this means the same thing, so this has to be a three. Okay? Great question. All right, all of this is also true with natural logarithms. Anybody remember the abbreviation for natural logarithm? Ln. Okay. So this, if you had log base e, which they will never write it like that, of x, it's written ln of x. They just, instead of calling it log base e, they just say natural log because it occurs in nature. All right, here's a picture. This is e to the x, which was 2.7 roughly. All right, and this is the natural log of x, which is its inverse. Undoes e to the x. All right, so a couple quick examples. Ln and e undo each other, so the answer here is 0.73. Can't take the log of a negative number. Ln and e undo each other and you get six. This one you'd have to use a calculator for. So ln of 32, calculator question. Three point four seven to two places. Okay, E and LN do what? Cancel. Yep, we just get four. How can I write that as a power of E? Negative three. Yep. And then LN and E undo each other, so we just get negative three. This is a calculator question because we don't know how to do the natural log of nine. It just wants a negative answer, though. So two zero? Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay? When we go to solve these later, you're gonna wanna carry out like four decimal places or when you type them back in, they're not accurate, but for today, two is fine, I don't care. All right, graphing this, students really struggle with this. How do I graph log base three of X and find ordered pairs and all that good stuff? I know. Today's calculators, the newer ones, have a log base thing and you can do it, okay? But what I want you to understand is that this is an inverse of three to the X. If you rewrite this sentence, Y equals log base three of X, it becomes three to the Y equals X, which if I do an inverse, becomes three to the X equals Y. So three to the X equals Y. Give me a couple ordered pairs. Three to the zero, three to the one, three to the second, Three to the negative one? One third. Okay, so when I go to graph the log, I'm gonna take all those and flip them around. So log base three of X is gonna have as our ordered pairs, the inverse of all these, so it will be one zero, three one, nine two, and one third negative one. I don't want to go to the next slide because I'll give away what it looks like, but one over one and up zero, over three and up one, over nine before we get up to two, over one third down negative one. Okay. Your asymptote is the y-axis or x equals zero, perfect. All right, so you guys already had this on your notes anyway, but here the asymptote is the y-axis or x equals zero. The domain is only positive numbers. Look at this, guys. Does it make sense that x is, can only be positive? Because you can only take the log of positive numbers, right? All right, the range is all real numbers. You can get out positive or negative answers. It crosses the x, not the y. Do you remember this notation? This means it's approaching zero from the right. I'm not gonna do limits and, and end behavior of very many of these, but do you remember that? That means as you get closer to zero from the right, what is this doing? It's going down towards negative infinity. As you get incredibly large off to the right, it is going up, it goes up very slowly, okay? If you wanted to know where this hit 100, be way, 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 way out there. All right, it is increasing from left to right. All right, so one more time, when you wanna graph a log function, graph the inverse and then use the table to switch the ordered pairs around. So how would we graph this? 
All right, or just do a few ordered pairs on our own. So if we were doing two to the x, what would some ordered pair, whoop, that didn't look like an exponent. Let me make that look better. Y equals two to the x, that's a weird x, half power, there we go. All right, so two to the zero would be one, two to the first would be, two to the second would be two to the negative one. That's probably enough to give us the right idea. Over, oh, oh, am I plotting those points? I was going to. It's gonna be a growth function if I plot those. If I wanna do the log, I have to do the inverse. So I'm going to plot one, zero, two, one, four, two, and one half, negative one. So the log equation goes this way. Doesn't touch, doesn't touch the way. I just realized it looks pretty straight from my angle. <laughs> I look at the computer screen, that is an incredibly crooked line I have drawn you. <laughs> yeah, I was looking up. Well, from this angle, it looks perfectly straight. <laughs> Y'all thought I was crazy. Hey, can I make it? Yeah, okay, and I can't change it because I can't get to my little arrow without turning off the screen cast o -matic. Okay, so there's the shape. Now I'll put back in. Ah! It still touched it. All right, but you get the idea. This is weird. This is a one third, okay? So we want to talk about one third to what power? So if we put in a zero, one third to the zero would be one. One third to the one would be one third. One third to the negative one though would be three. One third to the negative two flips it over and squares it so you'd get nine. So log of base one third, which I can't imagine me putting on a test or quiz, but if I did, it would have these ordered pairs. So it's shape. Badly drawn, no doubt, by me. But it would have one, zero, one, third, one, three, negative one, nine, negative two. This can really be written as three to the negative one, all to the x, and a reflection over the, well, this would flip over the y, but then when you did the inverse, I don't know, I'm just confusing myself. All right, this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna do a one third on a test. Are we good? Question? So this is logarithmic growth. It grows very slowly, okay? Logarithmic decay, going this way. We're not gonna do many of these. Here's all the properties in terms of domain and range, et cetera, which I'm also probably not gonna ask you about very often. Moving on. The transformations are the same when they happen inside the parentheses. They are the opposite of what they seem, okay? So let's talk about this. What happens when I do a plus four inside? I'm not, in it. I'm not asking you to graph, guys. Tell me the words. I could put this on the next quiz that's no calculator. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Our, can we, can we talk about this? We're gonna have a quiz that's no calculator. I could ask you these. I'm not asking you to graph it. I'm asking you to tell me the transformation of the graph, okay? Or 
I got people left. talking. This is four to the left. This one has got two things going on. If you had to put parentheses, it would just be around the X here. So the minus five is gonna go down, but first, before you shift it down, it's going to reflect over the X. Over the X. Why does it matter? What order you did that in? Because if you go down by your Yeah, if I shift this down five and then reflect it over the X axis, is that the same thing as this one right here? Um, last one, two things are going on here. What's happening? Vertical shift of three and left. Vertical stretch. And vertical. Yes. Okay. They call it expanded, but it's a vertical stretch by three times and left two. What's wrong? All right. You don't have these, but tell me what these would be really fast. Left, right, six. Uh, nope. Stretch. Shrink. Vertically by one half or 0.5. And this is not in the parentheses, so it's what? Down to. And this one would be? Left, four, and up, three. Good call. All right. There are tons of applications of logarithms, okay? Uh, one is listed up here, pH and acidity has to do with log. Intensity of sound and decibels has to do with logs. Um, the Richter scale that they measure earthquakes in has to do with logs, okay? There are lots of things that grow logarithmically because it goes slowly up, okay? So it can approximate a lot of things. but. This question says the intensity of sound measured in decibels can be modeled by, I'm taping this, can you not tap, thanks. Log, 10 times log of W, which is the intensity of the sound in watts per square meter, I don't know what that means, I'm not a science person, divided by W to the zero, which is a constant. Okay, I need you to know how to enter this in scientific notation. Do we know how to do that? On the calculator, it is this button, EE, -E, which is second comma. You find it? Second and then the comma above the seven, maybe? Is it above the seven? Okay. It's going to only put one E on your screen, but when you go to type this in, you only have to put in the exponent. Okay. So W was a person talking at 3.16 times 10 to the eighth. And our initial W sub zero we're supposed to use up here is one times 10 to the negative 12. So we are supposed to do 10 times the log of 3.16 times 10 to the negative eighth, but I'm just gonna type E negative eight, and it's a capital E from that second comma over one E negative 12, which means one times 10 to the negative 12. Miraculously, this is what I got. Because <laughs> yeah. it's still on my calculator from last period. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's going to be three, 10 log, which brings up the parentheses, 3.16e to the negative 8, divided by 1e negative 12. Is everybody finding that? The e is second, and then this comma key right up here. Well, good. No? You just put uh, negative 8 after, you don't put it as an exponent? No, you just type it in after. Yeah, good question. You don't need to use the to the power of key. That second comma takes care of that. It knows you're entering an exponent. That's what the double E stands for, enter the exponent. It's scientific notation. Have you not used this in science classes? No. Some of you have used that second comma key? Okay. What? Gunther, what's your question? Nick, can you look at his and see what he did maybe? Did you use a minus instead of a negative? 
I can come look. Okay, is that the problem? All right, then I'm going to keep going. <coughs> this is another example. It said, I, I won't make you type this one in. We'll just read through it quickly here, guys. But it says, a person who can only he has a hearing loss, they can only hear the sound if it's five decibels or louder. All right, so what could they hear this sound? You put it in on the top, you divide by that W sub zero constant that they told us was one times 10 to the negative 12, you type it in, you get 3.2. Could this person hear? No. No, because they can't hear unless it's over five decibels. All right, here's our question. The number of machines infected by a specific computer virus can be modeled by this equation where D is the number of days since the machine, first machine was infected. So about how many she, machines were infected on day 12? So put a 12 in. Can you type that in? I got 56.7. Or about 57 computers were infected. LN, remember using the natural log button? Yes, everybody okay? How many more computers were infected on day 30 than had been on day 12? So what are we gonna do? After we put in a a 30 so it's 6.8 plus 20.1 ln of 30 and you got what 75 so if we subtract the 57 we're at 18 about 18 more okay is this computer virus going crazy <laughs> okay yeah, on what day would it reach 75? Well, we already figured that out. It was day 30, right? But if we, can I model something for you that you're gonna have to do soon? If it said, on, if it said, on what day does it reach 100 computers? Right now, the only way you know how to do that is by graphing, okay? But explain to me the algebra that would start our process here. Subtract 6.8, which is, somebody help me, 93.2? Yeah. Thank you. Then divide by 20.1. Almost. We're going to rewrite this. How would you rewrite that sentence? E to the... 4.64, oh my goodness. You're supposed to all know the definition of log, right? E to the, this is the answer, the power equals D. So if you type that in, you would get how many days it would take? I got 103.5. All right, so in about 104 days, there will be 100 computers infected. So this is the kind of thing we're going to do some more of next week. All right, back. Oh, is that it? I'm done? Okay, these are the things you need to... Shh, can you just listen one second? I would do these without a calculator if at all possible. I crossed out purposefully the ones that you needed a calculator for. They're not assigned, okay? Because I want you to practice doing these without a calculator. This is, well, it's, all, it's, it's on your pink sheet. It tells you which ones to do. It's not a mystery, okay? But yes, I will leave this up there. Bye, Sierra. We're turning this off now.